Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture with the thought process that man is a curious and creative creature by nature, which I had emphasized in the last lecture. I also had told in the last lecture and this is, these are the two characteristics by which man has harnessed the science and technology for a uh, what you call quality life. And if you recapitulate that what we learnt in the last lecture, we started looking at what is the meaning of science, then we looked at what is the meaning of technology and how technology is different from engineering. And then we also looked at that in our ancient time, we were having silpa and what is the definition of silpa, which is a combination of engineering and technology. Of course, in English we call it industry and that is way by which you produce a product by using different processes and that we learned. And also we looked at that the India, in earlier days we called it as Bharat, which was dwelling upon harnessing the knowledge that is the meaning of Bharat. And we are a knowledge society we are having and what are the strength we are having not only the geographically, but also the uh, wealth wise resources and we are having a very great human resources as I had emphasized, they are intelligent and hard working people, right. And that is why I also related that corruption is there in this country because they are intelligent and hard energetic people and that is why we are corrupted. But if they were directed properly by imparting better education, they will be the harbinger of development in this country. So, India is, no, is not really a poor country, it is poorly managed country, I had emphasized. Beside this, we had looked at the chronological aspect of the various dynasty starting from the prehistoric era uh, and Indus Valley civilization subsequently uh, the Vedic civilizations and then the uh, what you call other dynasties like uh, your <coughs> Mauryan uh, dynasty and then uh, your Gupta periods and then there are several Pallavas and Cholas in south southern side and there are several dynasties we have looked at. So, uh, as I told you that recently the IIT Khadakpur have uh, done uh, research and published in the very prestigious journal Nature that our civilization is not started with the 3000 BC, rather it is something around uh, 6000 or 7000 BC kind of things. So, that is the new uh, input from that and which is question arises we are a part of Indus Valley civilization, we should feel proud of it. And question arises then, what do you mean by civilization? Because we say that we are part of a great civilization which is still existing today and a part of uh, you know our culture and rituals are very much integrated with the Indus Valley civilization. But what do you mean by civilization? Can anybody tell me? Civilization word is basically Latin word that means you are civilized. Earlier days people were moving in jungles, they were not civilized. Well, in my opinion civilization is a, a way of life of a group of people yes. uh, who do uh, businesses uh, for mutual welfare. Welfare, any, any other things he is right and there is a group of people can be a base or evolution of certain practice or anything. Practice having certain culture and certain philosophy and then life, what else any other things? So, therefore, we can Although call. There is a use of technology. Yes, that is important and they also harness 
the technology for a better life. Therefore, we can call, I mean like this is a definition what I have framed, you may find different definition in the literature. Civilization is a human society with advanced agricultural practice. Because food is important, I told you, our ancestor has told, Anne Pratishta Deva. So, Ann is very important. And with abundant food to donate, donation is a part of our life, time from since time immemorial. Today we are not donating, we are not giving, we are feeling bad to give, we are becoming more, you know, like what you call uh, keeping everything, hoarding it. But that is the thing, that is the sign of civilized people. And administrative structure for governance. It is not that you will do whatever you want, you should have governance. And higher level of spirituality, which is the basis of Indus Valley civilization or Indi, Indo, Indus Saraswati civilization nowadays we are calling it. And the science and technology and certain innate culture for leading a harmonious and fruitful life. Harmony is important and that is being talked about in our scriptures several times it is being emphasized that you will have to lead a harmonious and a fruitful meaningful life. You should not live like a, an animal from the very morning to the night you will be running for the food producing or doing you know you should have certain goal certain philosophy even life. So, <clears throat> that is what that we will be asking that question. Therefore, we call that as a civilization. Of course, there might be small things are there here and there, but I have tried to sum it up as a definition of civilization. Is it making sense to you? Yes. Is there anything missing in this definition? If it is so, then we can discuss later on. Uh, if we are having now, we can discuss. So, now question arises how to identify a civilization? In other words, what are the signatures of identifying whether it is a civilization, it is a good or bad or ugly civilization or what is it is. So, in other words, how to identify a civilization, what are the properties, characteristics. If you look at the definition I have given, most of the characteristics are included. So, I am giving a clue to answer this question. That means, what? <coughs> there should be good food arrangements. Yes. There that should mean, be good administrative bodies. Yes. Maybe what? It will be more systematic. Systematic. That means people will be having staying in it together. That is also very important part. And they will be staying means there should be habitats like you know there should be good construction of houses, huts, and then these things, right? That means if you look the urban and rural settlements will be there, right. And so also the primary producer of food, they should produce themselves, they should not you know like uh, what you call import, they should have their own food, self-reliant, not depend on others. And paying surplus to deity cents in today also, you know if you look at in this country, we may be having something 2-3 lakhs of cents who lives on others, we donate them and they take food. Even today, we say we may be poor, but we still give and that practice is a great practice which is from the time immemorial, it is with us. And monumental architecture and art, art is a part of life. Art is very important for human being, but we do not have time today to think about art and culture. So, and that needs a very peaceful and life and system for recording informations. If you look at whatever the you know like Veda, we are having a scriptures which is very one of the oldest rather that is the oldest scriptures in the entire world and beautiful you know thought processes and so exotic, so sophisticated in the nature. I sometimes feel how they frame those things you know, at, at that time. So, we are having that and development of exact and practical science. Today we talk about science, we are teaching science from the class 1, maybe from kg onwards, but we are not teaching the science them, we are just making them to remember, right. 
So then it is not science. So this would no practical aspect. If you look at science, when I define, I'll say that science in in Hindi or in Sanskrit we call began, bises gan. Basically, science is what? Science is common sense at the best, <laughs> right? And but we make it sophisticated and complicated, and then psychic the people not to take the science and <laughs> mathematics. That we are doing, and we are saying we are educating. So therefore, science and that to practical aspect of science is also very important and interdependent of classes. If you look at like our caste, people are saying, oh, caste is bad and all those things. Of course, caste in the present form is horrible, but caste does not mean, it is basically classification of the people like peasants, craft people, intellectual rulers. It is always there, that is the part of the things, right. So uh, it was a part of our society state and its governance and if you look at democracy is a basically originated in this country. Most of you may not be aware, right. And philosophy, we are having a great philosophy. Of course, recently we are not contributing to philosophy because we are running from pillar to post for the food and we do not know what we are doing. We are busy in our not for nothing. Therefore, we do not have time to think, <laughs> right. So, and then we are we don't have much philosophy but we are having a very you know plethora of philosophy and in our scriptures and spirituality is the base of our life and even today people are being attracted to this country for spirituality and we are having un, un, unique cultural values which are receding day by day so these are the things what we are having and if you look at what are the oldest civilization of the world, can anybody tell me? Because Indus Valley civilization is fine, we are a part of it. But what are the other in civilizations, oldest civilization? Mesopotamia. Yes. Any other? Harappan civilization. Harappan is Indus Valley civilization, right? What we are discussing now. Anybody? Minor civilization, yes, fine. There are several of them, but I have just jotted down the Mesopotamia of civilization, what people are saying something 3500 to 750 BC. Then next oldest is the uh, Indus Valley, 3000 to 1500 BC. If you look at IIT Kharagpur research has shown that we are older than the Mesopotamia and uh, recent uh, this thing and which has been published in uh, general, very prestigious general nature. And Mayan, that is 2006 and 700 BC, Chinese 2070 to 300 BC, Greek 800 to 500 BC, Roman 600 to 300. I must tell you that these numbers I have taken that which people have accepted. Maybe some people will claim something else as a thing, there are always a variation, do not go by the numbers, but these are the. But if you today look at, go to that place, find out is that civilization is dead? or it is still there, those civilizations. If you look at, they are dead, you do not get any signature from them. But in this country, I am very proud to say that we are having signature of the civilization, what was existing during Indus Valley even before. But unfortunately, because of cultural invasion today by the market forces in this country without our knowledge it is being going out at an alarming rate. So therefore, we became also like that maybe 50 within 50 or 100 years. And therefore, that is the main motivation for me to take this onerous task of doing this course, although I am not a qualified person to do this. So that is the reason I would ask upon people be feel that you are a part of a great civilization which is still living, about to die and dedicate your life for keeping it alive and also remove the uh, whatever the distortion it is having and keep the main essence of it and also take forward. So with this, I would like to ask upon you with this through this medium so that you can do. So question is, what are the speciality of Indian civilization? Why it is so? Can anybody tell me? Sir, 
so there was uh, so much decentralization of resources at that point of time so uh, means people do not have to dependent upon uh, very much upon the administrative bodies yes that means the self governance yes. they were governed by themselves it is the society was uh, what you call governing the governance but today it is other way around it is the top down approach earlier it is the bottom up approach yes there will be king there will be administrator but they will not interfere in the day to day affairs they won't control the life of the people the freedom freedom is the basis of our this thing today even today also we love freedom but we are not we are being chained without our knowledge with market driven metallism and also the uh, the administrators so if you look at we are having you know well planned rural and urban areas in the industrial civilization advanced science and technology that we will be discussing about what are the technology we are having how it is higher and scientific language i tell you that our language is very scientific in nature and we are having plethora of literature most of them are being destroyed but still we are whatever we are having the level is very high their level are quite high and the we are having joint family concept even today although it is being a turmoil or the dwindling but still we believe in the joint family culture which is a very important and spiritual practices and indian philosophy and love for mother nature that is very important and that is the basis with which ancient indian science technology were evolved out <coughs> because we believe that even if you go to the scripture you will see java tishtati me bhumandale sa saile banakanana tavat tishtati mediniyam santati putra pautri that means it is being told that as long as you take care of the mountains forest and the gardens and the nature so long you are taking care of those not destroying them live with them then you will be mother nature mediniyam this earth mother nature will be taking care of you not only you but also your next generations so that is the thing what we need to but today modern science is against the mother nature so that i will be talking about it so it is very important that today even even it is there in our heart we are not against the nature because it is my mother so can a son or daughter will go against the mother no so therefore that ethos is very important and unity in diversity you may find that several languages several kinds of people the several cultures are together but they are being bounded by the one thread that is humanity what i call spirituality so balance in life is important it is not that you will run after the money you will have to run after the power it is the balance which is important so also the searching for the ultimate truth because our scripture says that brahman satyam jagat spurti jeevanam satyasodhanam that means if i look at brahm which is the ultimate thing that is brahman satyam that is truth and jagat whatever the going on it is all dynamics are uh, in actions spurti in action you always will have to do something you know like it is not that you will be sitting idle and doing nothing taking the food that what we do nowadays not doing anything right so this is spurti and jeevanam satya sodham that means you are here to search the truth that is the ultimate truth and that is the basis by which science and technology been done in search of truth so truth is important therefore that has to be done and that is our ancestors has talked about it so <coughs> it is if you look at the vincent arthur smith a historian Uh, from 1848 to 1920 he has given his view on india india beyond all doubt possesses a deep underlying fundamental unity far more profound than that produced either by geographical isolation or by by political superiority 
that unity transcends the innumerable diversities. We are having diversities in this country of blood, color, language, dress, manners and sex, but still we are united. That is the thing that is unity in diversity. And let me tell you, India is not a country, it is a continent having so many climates, so many what you call languages, so many uh, what you call uh, um, uh, biodiversities. India is not a country, My, it is a continent, it is a subcontinent we call it, right. It is not a continent, rather it is a subcontinent. So, therefore, having a lot of capabilities and let me <laughs> just tell you <coughs> that how do we call like I mean basically what is the gift India's civilization gift to the world. So, it is a prodigiously creative civilization now people are very creative because they were having freedom. When they are freedom there is a food they will be creative by default as I told man is a creative curious and creative creature by nature we are spoiling them in the name of education. And that had contributed, that is this civilization had contributed for the welfare of the people around the globe. It is not only for us, it is across the globe we are having interaction with Mesopotamia, Persia, Central Asia, Egypt, Greek, Roman, China, Southeast, Far East Asia and several other countries. We do learn from them, it is not that we only give because it is exchange for kind of things. And we have also looked at not copy and paste the way we are doing today. We understand and then do because our Veda says learn from everywhere, wherever it goes. But you must understand and integrate with your cultural values, with your heritage and then adopt it, assimilate it, not just to swallow it because otherwise it will be indigestion will be occurring. That is the thing what is happening today. So, therefore, be careful. I am not saying that learn, do not learn from others, but learn by properly understanding how it will be useful to you and other things. And that is the what our uh, civilization had done. Sri Aurobindo says, Sri Aurobindo you people might be knowing who had lived in Pandicherry, contributed a lot of things to the modern philosophy of India and spirituality and she expands, she means his mother India, expands to outside her brothers, her ships cross the ocean. And the fine superfluity, superfluity means basically excess of her wealth because India was a wealthy country. That is why a lot of people were coming to this to take that wealth and enjoy that and brims over to Judeja. People are calling it as basically Soneka Chidiya. That means it is a country where you can get gold, right. So, therefore, her colony spread her arts and epics and creeds in archipelago, her traces are found in the sands of Mesopotamia, her religions conquered the China and Japan, spread the westward as far as Palestine, they conquered them but not sending a single soldier. They are culturally actually in the China and Japan were influenced a lot by Indian culture, not by sending by brutal force, that is a very important thing and spread the westward as far as the Palestine, Alexandria and figures of Upanishads and sayings of Buddhas are echoed on the leaves of Christ. Everywhere on our soil, so in our works, there is the teeming of super abundant energy of life and that energy of life I could see today among you. But those energy are not being channelized properly due to bad education according to me and once it is channelized we will be a great country without any doubt and we can give knowledge, we can contribute to the for the welfare of the world because we believe in Vasudeva Kutumbakam, every all are a family that is the humanity. So, <coughs> therefore, if you look at contribution, we are having a great contribution in spirituality and religion, philosophy, we are having a six set of philosophies and several others and sociology. <coughs> we are having a very good social system. Let me just discuss a little bit about it. We are having Barnasam. How many of you are aware? Okay, can you tell me what are those? Uh, Barnasam, <coughs> uh, ek vivasa thi, 
इसमें चार वर्णों में बांटा गया था मीन्स ब्राह्मण इट वॉज अ सिस्टम ऑफ सोसाइटी इन विच सोसाइटी वॉज डिवाइडेड इन फोर ग्रुप्स ब्राह्मण क्षत्रिय नो 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 दैट इज नॉट बन्ना बन्ना सम मीन्स बेसिकली इट इज वट यू कॉल द टोटल लाइफ स्पैन ऑफ ए पर्सन इज डिवाइड इन टू फोर पार्ट वन इज ब्रह्मचर्य ओके वन इज ब्रह्मचर्य अदर इज ग्रायस्थ द थर्ड इज बानपस्थ द फोर्थ इज संस so if you look at that brahmacharya in student life is very important a person has to develop a firm control over his sense organs right because once you control the sense organs of yours you will have to learn well because those are the things you need for learning anything new and once you do that then you will go and have a, a what you call um, married life and where you will have to also harness those knowledge and sense organs use them for the propagation of life and also contribute to the society do a life what you want to and also satisfy your desires and aspirations and then after that you will have to go for a banapastha where you will have to detach from this day to day life of married life and other things and contribute for the welfare of the society and later on once you welfare of the society you do then you will go for a renunciation and you will go for the higher level of thing so if you look at basically if i will concentrate on the banapasta banapasta is basically a beautiful thing where you will be thinking of your own for doing good to the society in today if you look at which is the the banapasta is generally from the age of something 50 to 75 if you consider 100 years of age of a person which was a very common and earlier days even if you consider today the total may be around something 20 crore people of this country will be there if 20 crore people start thinking about the welfare of the society society will be great and they are thinking not by the government forced by the government or some other they are doing from their own self so that is a beautiful system of sociology which is not there anywhere in the world or any other form to best of my knowledge if i am if something is there i will be very happy to learn because my knowledge is limited limitation and knowledge is limited so therefore that is a beautiful system there are several other systems are there of sociology people are not looking at it savvy similarly education system gurukul system we are a very beautiful system and we are the first to have a universe in the entire world right and that is uh, and management psychology psychology if you look at abraham maslow he has taken a concept from the taittiriya upanishad that is panchakosha i don't want to elaborate that you people should look at it and this is a similar thing and he became a famous because taking that and not acknowledging that he has taken that from that and we pe- poor people we are not looking at it right so that is the thing oh, i would like to ask you people please look at our own scriptures use it and even modern time it can be utilized that is the objective of this course to make you aware that we are having plethora of the knowledge informations which you can be utilized today so <clears throat> and we are language is great and scripts also and literature and arts agriculture we are very good today organic farming what you are talking about basically indian agriculture methodology has come in the organic farming textiles mathematics astronomy medicine physics and metaphysics mining and metallurgy and chemical technology ship technology some of these things we will be discussing not all because uh, this is a very introductory course let me tell you what this sir monier william the sanskrit english dictionary who is writing a preface for this he has written the hindus have made considerable advances in astronomy algebra arithmetic botany and medicine not to mention their superiority in grammar grammar is a very beautiful grammar we system we are having <coughs> and long before some of these science were cultivated by most of the ancient nation of europe hence it has happened that i have been painfully reminded during the progress of this dictionary that is the sanskrit lexicograph 
ought to aim at the kind of quasi omniscience. It is almost science what they are saying as a grammar, you know, and that is true, but we are not being taught properly the grammar, the Ostadhai and other things. So, I will tell you also what uh, Swami Vivekananda has told about our civilization. Civilization have arisen in other parts of the world in ancient and modern times. Wonderful ideas have been carried forward from one race to another. But mark you, my friends, it has been always with the blast of war trumpets and the march of embattled courts. You know, they have put force together, you know, they have used the arms and ammunition to, you know, uh, place or the force the culture, right. And each idea had to be soaked in the deluge of blood, each word of power had to be followed by the groans of millions, by the wells of orphans, by the tears of widows and this many other nations have taught, right, these are the things they have taught. But the India for thousands of years peacefully existed. Here the activity prevailed when the Greece did not exist. Even the earlier when the history has no record and tradition dare not fear, traditions and the tradition dares not peer into the gloom of that intense past. Even from until now, ideas after ideas march out from her, but every word has been spoken with the blessings behind it and peace before it. We, all of, we of all nations of the world have never been a conquering race and the blessing is on our head and therefore, we live. So, uh, we have seen that how Swami Vivekananda has talked about our civilization. What we will see that we will see what Alan Watts has talked about our civilization. He says that to the philosophers of India, however, relativity is no new discovery. You know the theory of relativity was you know epoch making in uh, what you call a discovery. But for Indians is not because they have lived with it. Just as the concept of light years is no matter for astonishment to the people used to think of time in millions of kalpas. Are you getting light years, you know, 3 into 10 power to 8 meter per second, right? Is it, am I right? No, no, no. Sir, into 360. Ah. So, all right. But the a kalpa is basically 4.3 to billions of years. One, we cannot think even today, I mean they have thought about what is the Kalpa. And the fact that the wise men of India have not been concerned with technological application of this knowledge. They were having knowledge, but they did not apply it that way modern people have done. Why? Why it is they did not do that? Can anybody tell me? Think about it, we will discuss. And arises from the circumstances that technology is but one innumerable ways of applying it. Let me tell you the technology what we are doing today. We are using technology and then we are not using the mind to develop. Our ancestors were very, very much keen to develop a mind so that they will conceive the magnanimity of the Brahman. Therefore, the technology is today against us developing the, expanding the horizon of mind. That is why they were not doing that according to my interpretation. So, therefore, India, let me just tell a quote from the Will Durant, American philosopher, what he has told. India was the motherland of our race. The Sanskrit, the mother of Europe's languages. The Sanskrit also is the mother of almost all languages in this country and is having a very good you know, grammar that is known as Ashtadhai. Let me tell you that today we do not have people who really having a good knowledge out of 130 crore who is in Ashtadhai. It is a, such a bad situation today and <clears throat> without which we cannot understand Vedas. We cannot understand lot of scriptures without knowing the grammar properly. So, she was, she was means mother India was the mother of our philosophy. Mother means creator. The mother through the Arabs of much of our mathematics, that means through the Arab, this mathematics which is the originated in India went to the European countries. Mother through the Buddha, 
of the ideals embodied in the Christianity, mother through the village community, we are having a community living and Western people are adopting, but we are leaving it, right? And of the self-government, self-governance is a part and parcel of our ancestors and the democracy. The mother India is many ways the mother of us all. He says that, Will Durant, the American philosopher. And nothing that, not only this, but he says nothing should be more deeply same the modern student, modern student of America, okay, than the decency of inadequacy of his acquaintance with India. See, look at, he is asking that you are not acquainted with the Indian knowledge or Indian culture and heritage, you should feel ashamed. But how many of you have, are aware of Indian philosophy today? That is, we should feel more ashamed than the Americans. We should be aware and that is the objective with which I am doing this course for you people and taking a lot of pain. I wish that you should work hard and do contribute for the uh, you know, propagation of this knowledge and also do research on that. So, this is the India that patient scholarship. Scholarship cannot be get in a hurry the way we live a life in today all busy for nothing. So, the patient scholarship is now opening up like a new intellectual continent to the western mind which only yesterday thought civilization an exclusive western thing. Because before the excavation of this Indus Valley civilization in Harappan region, people are not knowing India was having anything. But later on people have found that we are having plethora of it. So, that idea has been gone, but it is still in our mind that we are having nothing. We are having lot of things and we are also today having energetic and what you call intelligence mind, intelli intellectual mind that will be. So, with this uh, I will tell you that what will be the course content. I will start give an introduction, why are ancient Indian science and technology relevant today and we will be discussing about ancient Indian scientific methods being adopted to harness the science and technology, glimpses of ancient Indian science and technology I will be talking about. Later on I will be moving about agriculture technology being adopted now which is coming to our country as a organic farming that is the same thing old wine and new bottle and it is coming to us and our uh, what you call food being more costlier because you know the technology has come from outside, but it is our own technology. <laughs> So, what are harvesting technology and irrigation systems, which is a very beautiful, it is far superior than the what we are adopting from the western people. Rural and town planning, which is also equally good. Building construction, sanitation and I will tell you how we can reduce the cost, how we can adopt those technology even today and which will be more uh, environmental benign and also the cost effective textile technology and I will be discussing our material technology various aspect mining, metals, metallurgy, iron making, craftsmanship means basically and wood steel which was a very important one, I will be talking about that, extraction of zinc in ancient India, glass making, bead making, taking and ceramic technology and some other things also depending on the time I will be trying to cover. With this I will uh, uh, end this lecture saying that we know that what is the India, what is the ancient civilization how great were our ancestors were and what they contributed and what is the philosophy behind that. So, I have tried to give you a glimpses of that, but however you love to read, study and do that and uh, I in the next lecture I will be giving you some reference to study that, so that you can look at it some references and as I go along I will be talking about the references which you can look for uh, you know uh, knowing more about this course. Thank you very much.